Hello, welcome to Pro Tips number 46, where I'm going to talk about software usage. Now, a lot of you will find software usage very interesting. Um, unfortunately, it's not something that's naturally built into Land Super. We don't have a software usage metering kind of functionality built in. But today, I'm going to go through Land Super, kind of give you an idea of how you can get an idea of which software is being used, how often it's being used, etc. So you can also use that to then make decisions on how many licenses do you have? How many of these licenses do you need? Also, does everyone need a license? If somebody only uses a software product once in two weeks, maybe they don't really need it or um, they're not really using it to its full advantage. And you can do basically budget optimization or software asset management in general. You really need software usage for that as well. So I'm going to dive into Land Super, show you all the different things, give you some best practices as well on how you can do the software metering, how you can you how you can reduce the impact of that software metering scanning as well. So let's dive in. Here on the dashboard, you can see that I've thrown together a couple of widgets. I'm going to use Zoom specifically for this uh, for this pro tip to give you an example of what a software could be that you can kind of scan the usage of. Um, to begin with, um, I added it to a alert report widget where you can see just here it shows you how many Zoom processes have been created. Um, this is all based on a report that I created that looks at the past 14 days, but I'll give you some more details on that just in a minute. Um, on the right hand side, we see a breakdown of the usage per device and per date. So you can see that um, on two different dates, um, on one of my VMs, uh, Zoom has been started twice uh, on both those dates, as well as on the third VM or the second VM, actually. It's been used once on the 11th. And then at the bottom, you see we I created a chart report that actually shows you kind of visual overview of the same data. How many times has Zoom been started in the last 14 days and on which devices? Now in order to set this up, the way that I do this is with event lock scanning. Uh, there's a couple of ways that you could theoretically scan software usage. You could use registry scanning if you have some sort of software usage information in a registry key. You can scan file properties, but I found out that that doesn't really work well because every time you scan a file property, uh, it also accesses that file. So the last access date gets updated as well. So that's not really an option, but I looked at it, um, but unfortunately that wasn't really feasible. So you're really stuck with either event lock scanning or registry key scanning. Now I found that event lock scanning is the most accurate. Why? Because you do not need to catch the process actually running on a machine in order to find some way that it actually ran. With the event log, it registers nicely when the process was created, at what time it was created. So theoretically, even with event lock scanning, you could even check how long a specific process was run for because you can see the creation event and the uh, termination event as well. And you can then calculate the delta between that to see how long it actually has run. I'm not gonna go that far in this pro tip. I'm gonna keep it relatively basic, just showing you uh, for one specific piece of software, how many times and on which dates has that software been used. So you can get some indication of how frequently that software package is being used. So to do the actual scanning, you don't really have to set up anything specific scanning target wise. You can leave your scanning targets however you have them configured. However, the one thing that you will need to do is head over to configuration and in the server options, you'll find that there is a near the bottom a area for event lock scanning. Now by default, we only scan error events, but in order to scan the process creation event that we're specifically going to enable, then you'll need to also uh, enable the scan success audit events option there. Otherwise those events won't be picked up. Now to actually get those processes or those events created, you will need to adjust a local security policy. Um, you can do that either via GPO or um, manually if you like to do it manually. But I'm assuming that most of you will choose the automated option and just push it out via GPO. Uh, if you want to get the details on specifically which um, which policy you need to enable. I'd suggest going to the blog version. There's a breakdown there of specific which policy you need to enable and also where you can find it. Um, but it's basically the creation of uh, or the process creation policy um, that you need to enable so that it creates events for all of the process creation events. Uh, without that, you won't be able to get the information either. Now, once you've enabled this and you've enabled the policy, 
basically you've met the prerequisites to do the scanning and to catch all of the events. The next thing is, these are more some best practices when it comes to event log scanning. Event log scanning is very resource intensive, uh, both because you're generating a lot of extra events, so it's Lan Super scanning a lot of extra events. So that means that's a lot, scanning generally takes longer on those machines that do have those uh, events enabled. And so I would suggest to only enable these events on devices that you really want to scan software usage from. Don't enable it on other ones. Um, and when, you go to scanning and then file, uh, no, it's scanned item intervals. There's an option here. So this is the menu where you can choose how frequently Lion Super scans or rescans data. And when you go over here, there's a item called event log, as you can see, and it has a number next to it. And the number is how frequently it is rescanned, um, how many days. If it's on a zero, that means it's rescanned during every single scan of a scanning target. Now for this specific use case, you don't really need it to be rescanned every scan. You could say, you know, I only want it to be rescanned uh, once every seven days. Um, the event logs will be created or the events will be created. Even if you only scan it once every seven days, you'll still retrieve those events. You're just retrieving them slower and in less of a frequent interval. This will help with uh, preventing you or kind of speeding up your scans as well as um, making sure that you know, you're not basically um, using, using scans that you shouldn't really be using or bottlenecking your own scanning server, etc. So once you've looked at this, again, this is just a recommendation. If you have other use cases that really need event log to be scanned every single scan, then obviously you can leave it at zero. Um, the next thing that you also should take a look at is, and we're gonna head back to the server options, is cleanup options. Because you're scanning a lot of data, and especially if you do this on many devices, many Windows machines, it will start eating up your database space quite quickly. Right now, I have set mine to delete event log entries every seven days. Obviously, if you only scan once every seven days, you might wanna put this to like 14 days. It also kind of depends on how, over how long of a period you want to check software usage. Obviously, your period needs, or your deleting of the event log entries need to be as long as the period, or at least as long as the period that you wanna check in. Uh, otherwise, your entries will be deleted before you can check how frequently the device or the software is being used. Um, and this will this is mainly to ensure that you're not uh, filling your database entirely with event log entries, which can happen. Right now, I have this is a quick install of Lan Super. I think it's like a 10 gigabyte database. By having it on seven days, I think I have around a thousand machines or something like that. Um, even if I have it set to seven days, it's already filling up half of my database. So putting this at 14 would most likely fill up my database entirely. So that's just to give you some indication of how much data it's actually storing and using. But make sure you take a look at this and adjust it as needed. Now, on to the actual data. Um, I created a couple of reports. Again, you can find these reports in the blog version attached. Um, I'm gonna head over to my reports here and type in zoom, and that should give me the three reports that I also showed on the dashboard earlier. So I'm not gonna show the chart again because um, you've just seen it, but just to give you an idea of these other ones, open that in a new tab. And there we go. Um, so this one is just a list of all of the entries. As you can see, it gives you all of the details of that specific event that has been scanned. You can see a new process has been created and then we can see the zoom.exe. In this report, if you wanna adjust it for your software or the software that you're interested in scanning, all you need to do is go into the report, adjust the exe or the executable that it's looking for uh, to whatever software that you want to monitor. And that's all that's really needed. The rest you can reuse and that goes for all those reports. So if you wanna use them, make sure that you adjust the software package that it's looking for. Uh, it also gives some additional details like the date that's generated um, and uh, what machine it was detected on. Now for the next report, head back and look for Zoom. Um, then we have the usage one. This is very similar to the chart 
that I made, I just added one additional parameter, which is the date generated. Just to give you that overview, if you see a machine that is using a specific software package a lot, um, or maybe almost never, you can check exactly on what dates those events were scanned and how many times that event was scanned. Um, so I can see here that on my, uh, my VM, it has been scanned both on the 6th of September and the 11th of September, uh, both of those times twice. Um, and I can actually go back to the dashboard now and go to Zoom software usage. Um, and just before I started this uh, pro tip as well, I re actually started to Zoom on the VM that's only had it run once, just so I can show it to you in action. So if I switch back to my page here, of this asset, I'm going to quickly rescan the assets, and that should um, pick up all the events again, regardless of what you've set the interval to be of scanning the event log. If you do a manual rescan, something uh, kind of a niche thing to know, but if you manually rescan an asset, it will always be completely rescanned. All of the items will be rescanned, regardless of what you've configured your settings as. Those settings that I showed earlier are specifically for scanning targets and basically the automated scans that the scanning targets perform, perform themselves. If you do manual rescans, everything will always be rescanned, the complete asset. So this is scanning. And while we wait for that, I'll jump back to my dashboard here. And as soon as that asset has been fully rescanned, we'll see in the numbers change here as well. So right now we have five Zoom processes that have been created in the last 14 days. You can see here that it's split up four and one. And if I refresh now, and as you can see, it has picked up the additional creation processes. So now you can see that the VM that I just launched Zoom a couple times on now has three entries for the last 14 days, and you can here also see the exact dates. Um, so now on the 12th, we have two new entries that have been detected. And overall, that means that we have seven Zoom processes that have been created in the last 14 days. So that more or less wraps it up, gives you an overview of how you can do software metering or software usage scanning with Landsweeper. Obviously, I know that this isn't a perfect solution for everyone. It very much depends, and you need to make sure that you configure it correctly so that you're not filling up your database with event logs. That also works with whatever event log tool you might already have. Um, you might have to green light it with teams within your organization if you have a large organization. But this is the way that you can do it using Landsweeper. Um, so you, if you are interested in getting this type of data in Landsweeper and using it, then this is the way to do it. Um, obviously, Keep in mind those past practices that I mentioned that you're reducing as much as you can the impact that the scanning has and that you're doing it in a well, most performant way that you can basically. Um, and with that, I wanna thank you for watching and I'll see you next time.